I have a sweet tooth, and it's kind of a problem. Now, anybody who knows me knows that I just absolutely love gummy candy. Kind of like this. Notice I got the two pound bag, you know, just in case. Now, my problem is that when I start eating this, I just can't stop. And it's probably a sentiment that most people feel when they start eating sugary sweet food is that you just can't stop. And the reason is because your brain is hardwired to recognize that sugar that you're eating and make you want more of it. When you take a look at what this food actually is, it's really nothing more than carbohydrates. But most people think about carbohydrates as bread, cereal, pasta, but sugar is also a carbohydrate. So what's a carbohydrate? All carbohydrates chemically are built from carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in varying amounts. When you put these atoms together, what you create are carbon-based ring structures, which we call sugars. Now, these sugars can also serve as the building blocks to make bigger, larger carbohydrates. Now, in the biological world, carbohydrates have a wide and diverse array of functions. So, for instance, long carbohydrates make up the structural components of plant cell walls. They also lay the foundation for the exoskeletons of crustaceans and insects. So, the next time you want to crack open a lobster claw or squish a bug, that characteristic crunch that you hear is actually just all carbohydrates. Now, carbohydrates can also be used for cellular communication. So, for instance, a white blood cell can recognize a foreign bacterial cell in your body because of the carbohydrates that that bacterial cell has on its surface. Now, primarily, carbohydrates are used by cells and organisms for energy. And you're probably more familiar with these carbohydrates than you think because they're all considered simple sugars. Now, if that simple sugar has only one carbon ring, it's considered a monosaccharide, like glucose, fructose, or galactose. Now, if you take two of these monosaccharides and connect them together, you've created what's known as a disaccharide, like sucrose, lactose, or maltose. Now, if you take multiple monosaccharides and start creating a long carbohydrate chain, you're creating what's known as a polysaccharide. Now, in your body, one of the most important polysaccharides is called glycogen. And glycogen is a molecule that's actually made by your body in order to store sugar for later use. Now, as far as nutrition is concerned, polysaccharides that you ingest are usually referred to as complex carbohydrates. And these get broken down into two basic categories. Starch, like you find in potatoes, rice, and corn. And fiber, like you would find in green vegetables, beans, and whole grains. Now the difference between starch and fiber is whether your body has the ability to break them down and use them for energy. Starch can be broken down. Fiber, on the other hand, can't be digested and can't be used for energy. Now, all these carbohydrates are naturally occurring, but if you take a look at the label on any processed foods, you'll probably find sugar derivatives instead. So, what's in a name? That which we call sugar by any other name would taste as sweet, right? Now, all these sugar derivatives are added to food because the producers know that you're hardwired to want it. All the cells in your body and all of your organs run on sugar, but not just any sugar, glucose in particular. And your brain is the biggest offender. It uses enormous amounts of glucose every single day. Glucose is so important that your body will actually make it if you're not ingesting enough of it in your diet. So you can think of glucose as the currency of bioenergetics. It's really important. Now, the only problem is that when you ingest sugar, you're not actually just ingesting glucose. Usually what you're ingesting is sucrose, which is a disaccharide. It's made up of one part glucose and one part fructose. Now the glucose part of that is actually not all that sweet, not all that interesting. The fructose, on the other hand, is extremely sweet. And when you perceive a food as being sweet, it's actually the fructose that's sending that message to your brain. So when you crave sugar, you're actually craving fructose. And once they're in your body, glucose and fructose act very differently and get metabolized very differently. Glucose can be extracted from the blood by virtually any cell in the body. Fructose, on the other hand, can only be sent to the liver. Now, in times where energy is abundant, fructose will eventually get converted to fat. 
And in fact, any excess glucose will also make its way to your liver. And once your glycogen stores are built up, will also be converted to fat. And therein lies the problem. When you ingest too much sugar, fructose, or glucose, it will ultimately get converted to fat if you're not burning it for energy. So why don't we just stop eating sugar? Well, that's because you're evolutionarily programmed to crave sugar. When you eat sugar, you're initiating the reward system of your brain. And it's telling you that you're doing something good, and that you should keep doing it. Now, the molecule that's associated with the reward system in your brain is called dopamine. And it's that molecule that's associated with that warm, euphoric, fuzzy feeling that you get when you do something pleasurable. So, am I addicted to sugar? Yeah, you better believe I'm addicted to sugar. But so are you, and so is everybody. You really can't help it. It's just evolution. So, here's to addiction. And remember, science bonds us.